Completing a Stuart triple expansion engine, part 56, showing the boiler that I propose to use for this engine and thinking about the cylinder cladding as the anodized aluminium is very fragile. For the moment I will use this as it is easy to work with, but I think I may end up using this stuff as a template for the final cladding in painted steel. In this clip you can see the boiler I'm going to use. I showed it in the previous episode at the end. It's a Scotch return tube boiler and it's really good. In fact, it is so good I even fitted a three cock really good water gauge to it. You can see it in this clip and the body is made from phosphor bronze, not brass. Oh yes, I almost forgot and they are not cheap. I'm taking some measurements because I'm thinking ahead to the baseboard for the steam plant. This is the point where it's not a good idea to get too silly. Do I want to put a condenser on the baseboard? Do I want the water pump that's on the engine and the vacuum pump that's on the engine to operate the condenser? No, because in reality condensers are not right next to the boiler and it would start to look very cluttered and very silly. I want to keep it simple. To start this episode, let's have a bit more running in. That of course was a bit of slow motion and the engine is really starting to free up now and run a lot smoother than it did. Don't forget this has never been a working engine. When I got it, it was only part finished and there was quite a lot of work to do. Now it's all down to the finishing, which in itself is a difficult job. I need to position the drain cocks in the correct place. At the moment they're just in the holes plugging them up but I can't leave them like this. These link pipes that connect the high pressure cylinder to the intermediate pressure cylinder and then to the low pressure cylinder need to be removed. By the time I've finished this engine, this piping will be attached to the block using either 7BA bolts or some 7BA studding with nuts. These brass dome head screws are no good at all. You can't get enough pressure to properly seal the pipes against the block. At this stage, they are not fitted with gaskets either. I bought these drain cocks via eBay, and they're actually quite good, and they're not as expensive as the ones you would normally buy from the company we all know and love, but then again, they're not quite as strong either. The good news is, they have a PTFE insert, and therefore they don't leak. For the moment, they are gone, because I need to do some fitting on this side, and I don't want them in the way. Here is the piece of cladding that I cut originally for this side of the engine. I'm not too thrilled with this stuff because it's made from aluminium, it dents very easily, and you can damage the anodized layer by just rubbing it with your fingers. I'm going to use something else I'll show you at the end of the video. Initially, I made the holes larger where the drain cocks go because I didn't want to clamp the aluminium to the block using the drain cocks. But in retrospect, I shouldn't have done this. It would have looked neater with the drain cocks just going through the hole into the block with a smaller hole in the cladding. What I'm doing here is scribing the position for the flanges of the piping on the cladding. You will notice in this clip that I haven't yet drilled the four mounting holes to secure the cladding to the block at each corner. As you can see here, I've now scribed around the flanges of the piping and it's at this point I realised I had made an error. The scribed marks on the cladding are on the outside of the pipe flanges. So when I trim to this line, I'm going to have a problem. There's going to be a gap. This was the template I initially used, made from a piece of Christmas card. It was okay when I first started, but it soon got oil-soaked and quite soggy. Over now to my bench-mounted Proxon motor tool fitted with a drum sander. This is what I'm going to use to cut the holes in the cladding. There's not much video of this because I really had to concentrate on this job. And the problem is, of course, I went up to the line. Which means that these two holes are going to be a little bit too big. I will bear this in mind when I use this aluminium piece as a template for the steel one. This bench-mounted Proxon motor tool gets a lot of use. It works very well as it is with a suitable tool fitted in the chuck, 
or I can fit a flexible drive into the chuck, which makes it even more useful for working on any parts where I can't physically get the drill into place. Here's the story so far. I now have two cutouts in the cladding that are almost the right shape. In fact, when I hold the piping in place, it really doesn't look too bad, but I know it's not the right shape, so that means I need to do something about it. It's not ADHD or OCD, I just like things to be right. This is a very high quality engine and I need to do the best I can on it. Either way, I cannot live with this aluminium stuff. It really is weak and the more I handle it, the more marked it gets. As far as I'm aware, in times gone by, the cladding for Stuart engines was made from anodized steel, which to be fair did change colour slightly with age, in fact considerably. But in my opinion, it was better than this stuff. And now it's top tip time. This is a top tip from my friend Ronnie Mall in Scotland. When I was talking to Ronnie about what to use for cladding, he said, go to your local supermarket and buy some really cheap baking trays. I actually bought these via Amazon, and I bought six of them, and they were incredibly cheap. And why did I buy six of them? Well, I may use some more of these baking trays to clad other engines, but I do have an alternative use for them, which, strangely enough, is their intended purpose. Using them in the oven for baking, or in my case, for cooking steak, as well as for cooking oven chips in the oven. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.